In the next exercise, uh, we're gonna write a program which is a simulator of one arm bandit. One arm bandits are uh, hazard machines in uh, where there are three slots, yeah, and uh, in, in for, for every slot there is drawn one symbol, yeah. Those probabilities of fair one arm bandits for each symbol is uh, you can find over there. Yeah, while and uh, depending on uh, the combination of uh, drawn symbols, you receive different uh, payouts. Yeah, those payouts are over here. Yeah, but uh, right now they are not that important. Yeah, so let's focus now on on the on uh, writing a program that uh, draws uh, uh, symbol uh, symbols for our uh, machine. To write our function on drawing uh, random symbols, we will use a function that we already, uh, a command that we already know, uh, sample. Yeah, and uh, here we define new function. Okay, and uh, now. Here I provide values that uh, symbols that can be drawn in uh, in our machine. So we have diamonds, seven, triple bar, double bar, single bar. Cherry and zero. Notice that in uh, this wheel is a vector, so I couldn't write seven as a number because other elements of this vector are uh, characters. Yeah, and the same thing is uh, for uh, zero. So now we create this vector of, of symbols and we sample from this vector and we draw three elements. Three elements and in slot machines those elements should be replaced. In that it should be possible that I can draw two single bars yeah or or uh, that if i draw for for, uh, for one slot if i if i draw one uh, one symbol i should be able to draw the symbol again yeah so for this reason we provide uh, our, uh, argument true for replace and uh, new uh, new option that uh, we will use in this exercise is prop. Prop is a vector of probabilities of elements x. Yes, so so from our uh, from our table over there, uh, those probabilities should be of this form. I guess. Point twenty-five. 0, 1, and yeah, there are seven elements here, and also here there are seven elements. All those, mm, all those, all those elements should sum to one, yeah, and yeah. Notice also that here we don't provide an argument because our function doesn't need an argument. Yeah, so it's if we want to call this, we just type normal brackets without an argument. You see, this is our one arm bandit simulator. The next thing that we would like to do now is uh, to determine what's the payout given 
<coughs> sampled uh, uh, symbols, yeah, and uh, to uh, however, before we do it, I have to introduce new uh, new programming element, namely conditional statements. And suppose that we are interested in computing the absolute value of a given number, yeah, and uh, in R, indeed. In R we have already this function that computes absolute uh, value of, 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 of given number, yeah, and it, it is called APS. But we want to compute this on our own. And, uh, and the absolute value works in this way, that if the number is positive, an absolute value is equal to this number, and if this number is uh, negative, uh, then uh, the absolute value is minus this number. Yeah. So if we have number two, the absolute value of this is two. If we have minus two, the absolute value is two. So two. So here we want to. Uh, compute minus number only if this number is negative and here uh, if statement is uh, very useful yeah because this works in this way yeah, that we type if use curly brackets and in if statement we provide condition under uh, condition that if this condition is true, then uh, the chunk of the code inside curly, uh, curly brackets next to if statement is uh, is run. Yes. So if num is smaller than zero. Mm, sorry. Okay. And then it should return uh, minus one. Let's write it this way minus one times uh, num. And on the other hand, if this is, I will copy this. If this is, if this number is non-negative, then this part of uh, the code is not run. Yeah. In the next example, we will write uh, a function that returns a uh, rounded number and uh, this example is to illustrate extension of if statement to if and else statement. Yes, so here we are interested in computing rounded number for, for our number. This works uh, around uh, how we uh, uh, how do we round numbers? If uh, this decimal part is smaller uh, than uh, 0.5, then we return truncate uh, integer uh, integer part of uh, this number. If this uh, decimal part is equal or greater than 0.5, then we return integer number increased by 1. And in our example, we to compute this, first we need to take this part and this part 
can be computed using trunk. This function truncates the number and returns on the integer part. And so, if we want to compute only this part, it's enough to take this number minus trunk this number. Okay? And it should be 0.14. Yes, it is. And now, for rounding the number, we should check if uh, this is greater or equal 0.5. If it is, we run this uh, uh, this uh, chunk of code. One one remark about curly brackets. This, uh, the beginning of curly bracket can be at the next at the next line, but also here. Yeah, and uh, and uh, for if this is uh, very liberal, for else it's not so. Yeah, so this is uh, why I mentioned this. And now, if that is greater than uh, than uh, than uh, 0.5, then our return number is number is equal to truncate, truncated number plus one and now we have this and if this condition is not met we type else and this means that if the condition from if statement is not true, then this part of the code is run. And here what is super important is that else must be in the same line as the um, closing curly bracket for if statement. Otherwise it, it won't work. Okay. We see, yeah. And uh, for instance, if this is this number, it should return four after running this part of the code. And just to show you that this doesn't work, here we will get error message slightly. Yeah. So remember that this L statement must be in the same line with closing the re bracket. Won't work. The very last extension uh, of conditional if statement is else if. And uh, to illustrate how it works, before I present this example, I will. I don't know whether uh, I discussed this function. I, I don't think so. Yeah, so print it provides yeah it, it it print the result or print some some text string. Position. Yeah, and uh, and we can uh, so here if we want to provide some some uh, print some uh, some message we can use print uh, and in this example we will write a function that compares a and b and. Let's say that those two numbers are exactly the same and if a is greater than b, 
print a units. Yeah. But in this situation, so we know that if A is greater than B, A wins, but we don't know whether if, if this is false, whether B wins or we have a tie. Yeah, because uh, there are two, two possibilities, that B is greater than A or B is equal to A. So, mm, so else if so we write else and new condition a is smaller than b and then we print b wins and if neither of those conditions are true then we can type this code which is run if no, none of those conditions uh, are true. Okay. Yeah. So this is how, how it works here yeah, that, that uh, the, the very last else is, uh, is, is, is run uh, it's, it runs the, the code if uh, none of the previous conditions uh, are not. We will write the code that computes uh, the payout of the realized outcome in several steps. And uh, the first step will be to check whether all sampled elements are of the same type. So, suppose that we generated that 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 our uh, our outcome of uh, our function are uh, three sevenths, and now we want to try to, to to write such a code that uh, that provides true result if all those elements are the same. How to do it? We can do it in several uh, ways, and yeah. So let's start with the first example. <clears throat> we check whether the first element of the vector is equal to the second element. Okay, it is. But now we can check this and using end operator we can check whether those two conditions are true at the same time. Because of transitivity of, uh, of uh, <coughs> uh, equality operator, we don't have to compare symbols 1 and 3. Yeah, because yeah, uh, it is it's not necessary here. So that's the first way to check it. Alternatively, we can Check whether some symbols, this is the second way, whether all symbols are equal to the first element. This we will get, with this code we will get true, true, true. Yeah? And if we want to check whether all those conditions are true, we can use function all that checks, we, we discussed this before, that this checks whether all conditions, uh, in all elements of, of, the, of the provided vector are true. Yeah. The third quite smart way to do it is to use the command unique. Command unique returns unique values of a given vector. Yeah. So if we have something like this, it will return only unique values. And if we type symbols, we will get only, yeah, if all elements, if all elements are the same, we will get only one element. So, so, 
all elements are the same if length is equal to 1. The next thing that uh, we have to check is whether uh, uh, drawn uh, symbols or, or, or symbols are bars of any type. And just to, 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 to remind you that we have uh, single bar, double bar and uh, triple bar. So if uh, we have symbols like this, Yeah. So not all elements are the same, but here we have a case that uh, that two elements are single bars and one element is double bar. How to check whether uh, yeah, it's uh, it's uh, it's the case? So one <clears throat> one solution, which is not very cool, is just to check whether symbols. The first element is either single bar or double bar or, or triple bar. And here, okay, and the same thing for the second element. the third element. What's wrong here? Everything was correct. Uh, before, uh, what was the problem is that I forgot to change uh, values of symbols and now we have before we had uh, 777, yeah, and obviously that was the reason why uh, this code re returned false. Here, now it, it returns true, as, I, uh, as, uh, as expected. Also, what I would like to stress, this is a subtle but important thing, is that, that it's good, uh, good uh, programming practice to use uh, uh, brackets to determine the order of operations, see? because without those brackets over here, uh, this end operator would be computed before or. End operator of this condition and this condition. Yes, yeah? so we have to use. Uh, we should use brackets to to make uh, our logical statements. Uh, clear, yeah, mainly to us, but also to R if uh, if we use uh, AND and OR operator. Uh, that being said, this is not the smartest way to um, check this condition because what is way smarter is just to use IN operator and we check whether Whether symbols are in this uh, data set. So we have true, true, true. And now to check whether all those conditions are met, we use all. Exactly the same thing, the same result as here, but done in a smart way. And uh, I really advise uh, you to use uh, this approach. Uh, we have the code that checks whether all elements. Uh, in vector symbols are the same. This is this code. Right now it's false because symbols were changed. Changed. But if we uh, so let's change it back to three sevens. Yeah. And now it's true. So now we can compute part of the code which is executed if all elements are the same and 
The next thing that we have to determine is what type of symbol will we sample here, because depending on uh, the symbol, we have different layout. So here we have to write symbols and we can create new variable symbols. The first element is enough because if this part of the code is, is, is executed, it means that uh, yeah, symbols 1, symbols 2 and symbols 3 are the same. Yeah, and, and we check if this symbol is uh, equal to mm, diamond, then our price is 100. If uh, the symbol is not diamond, and else if symbol uh, is triple bar, then the price is 14. I forgot to put I fast forwarded in the moment of typing yeah, because it wasn't uh, that interesting yeah, and and now we have the code that first checks whether all symbols are the same if they are then we check what type of symbols yeah and in our case we have three sevens so from our list it should return 80 I guess and uh, yeah so let's run this part of the code and let's see yeah 18. as you can see looking for a specific value using uh, if statement uh, is may uh, may be quite cumbersome yeah and for this reason there is alternative stru structure called lookup table just before we discuss uh, the following uh, data structure that we can create named vector and then instead of calling uh, this vector by uh, indices, we can use name. Yeah. If we call this, and then, then, uh, then we call element Q W E of the of, with, with this name. Yeah, and this uh, this element uh, has a value. Uh, 43,423 uh, yeah and if we want to obtain this result without this name it's enough to this yeah why I'm talking about this right now because or on the, the sequence of many if conditions can be co written in a very complex way and uh, can, the same thing can be done instead of many lines only one line yeah. so let's write this okay We have this vector, this named vector, and now using using our previous code, we can 
So if all elements are the same, we can check payouts, symbols, the first. So here we have seven. So we can check what's the payout, what's the price for uh, for uh, for element named seven. Yeah, and so here symbols one. This is our price. So let's check whether this work. Also, yeah, here we should unname this yeah, to eliminate the name in the, in, the, uh, in the output. Yeah, and yeah, we get exactly the same result. And notice that here I needed how many lines? One, two, three lines to do the same thing as. here. Yeah? I don't want to count uh, how many lines I use here, but way too many. Yeah. By the way, uh, this, this example also shows that uh, very often smart code is much shorter than long code, and in the past programmers were paid uh, for a number of lines they coded. Yeah? So it wasn't very efficient yeah, because program, uh, programmers would get uh, higher, uh, higher, uh, higher uh, salary for writing this code instead of this one. Yeah, so yeah, it's small regression. Our code that we have at this moment can be summarized in uh, uh, two uh, in two parts. Yeah, and the first is that we check. our code so far. We check whether all symbols are the same. We can assign this to this. And we check if all elements are in this set of uh, three arguments. And if this condition is true, then we compute the price using our payout uh, table, which is defined here. And this is our price. Else if all elements are not the same, but are bars of different types, then our price is equal to Our price is equal to five, right? The remaining part that still we, we need to code is to check the number of cherries. And we will do this uh, in the next uh, episode. Yeah, and, and I think that this is it for uh, this episode. Yeah, so see you soon. After recording the previous uh, cut, I realized that to finish this exercise, we need only few additional lines of code. Yes, so I think that it's better that I will put it here and uh, we'll start a new lecture with completely new clip. Yeah, okay, so sorry for confusion. So in our uh, program, we can see We've already considered uh, two cases where we receive uh, any price if all elements are exactly the same and if all elements 
are bars out of different types. Yeah, and for this case, your price is always five. Uh, the very last uh, case where, where you receive any price is that you draw cherry. Yeah? And you draw cherry, uh, and depending on number of cherries, you can uh, get either two, five, or ten. Yeah? As you can see from uh, this uh, payout table. Uh, the situation uh, of three cherries is already considered in this block, so now we have to focus only on uh, uh, one or two cherries. So now suppose that we have what was uh, yeah the cherry was we've seen. So uh, and some other number. And now how to compute the uh, number of cherries? Okay, it's quite easy. Because now. We check whether, those che whether which symbols are cherries, and then now we have this vector of true and false uh, values. So now it's enough to sum this number, and we are interested that if this number is 2, I receive uh, 5, and if this number is 1, I receive uh, 2. Yeah, and uh, I could write if statement, but ex exactly the same thing uh, can be done using only one line of code. If you write something like this, And we have so now if number of cherries is equal to zero, then this should be returned. Sum is equal to zero. So here, if we add plus one, it will return the first element. If number of cherries is 1, then it should be written 2, and 1 plus 1 is 2. And if number of cherries is 2, then it returns my, pay, uh, my payout, my price should be 5. So here we have sum of symbols plus 1. And in our case, now what we should get should be uh, five. Yeah. For only for only one cherry, we get two, and for zero cherries, yeah. Again, we could do it with if with if statements, but it would take additional a few additional li uh, lines of code and. This is uh, com uh, this uh, this uh, this uh, formulation is uh, much more compact. Okay, so this is it. And the very last thing that uh, we need to introduce in uh, in our code is uh, the number of diamonds. For each diamond, our price is uh, multiplier by two and so right now we have to check symbols how many symbols are diamonds and our price after this diamond adjustment will be our price times 2 to the power of diamonds. If we have only one diamond, the price is increased by 2. If we have two diamonds, 
we the, the price is increased by uh, is increased uh, four times and uh, for three the diamonds not only we have the the price of 100 from the table but also there is this bonus uh, of multiplication of eight times yeah. and yeah and this is it yeah so now this is really the end of this course sorry for the confusion yeah and tomorrow we will start lecture two which i think that uh, in terms of length should be substantially shorter than this one yeah, because normally uh, it took me more than one day to teach uh, all, the, uh, all, all those materials yeah so see you soon yeah and uh, have a nice uh, evening